Hello and welcome to another episode of our Midweek Conversation at First Baptist Sweetwater, where we strive to be the first responders of God's love. I'm Jerry Hendricks and we're in Studio A. When I say we, I'm talking about me and my good friend Teak. Studio A. I love it that we have multiple studios. Well, I thought it was time. Uh, you know, during the Christmas season, right. uh, we were in different places, different on different locations. Right. And so I kind of realized we're, you know, we've upped our game a bit. And so kind of getting sophisticated. So for, for those out in the listening world, they know we're in a different location. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Anything we can do to help connect with our <laughs> listeners. I do like that. <laughs> All right. Well, we finally got a Sunday underneath us. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah. So finally got the, here it is, the third uh, Sunday in the year. Mm-hmm. And we, we got, got to be together. So, uh, and then we've got things planned for uh, the next few weeks. So tell us what's coming up this week. Well, this week, uh, last Wednesday, we launched our children and youth ministries on Wednesday night. Uh-huh. We we always take a break in there when school ends and when school begins. We kind of let it get in swing, and then we start back up. Uh, the children are preparing for this Sunday. They're going to be leading in worship, and so they'll be singing the song. They practiced that on uh, Wednesday night with uh, Jenny and Melody, and so they've been preparing to lead us in, in music or in worship on Sunday morning. Uh, in youth, we continue our invisible study on Wednesday night. It's We had a, I'd, I'd call it a soft launch, um, kind of, you know, you have basketball and you have uh, 4-H. It was a soft launch, we'll call it that. <laughs> um, but it was an addition. Normally that series, when we do invisible, looks at it's a three-week series this year. I'd added a fourth one to kind of kick it off. And we looked at uh, the ways that we would be able to live out invisible and so it gave students the opportunity to make a commitment to that uh, using some, a quote from your previous conversation uh, speak love speak the gospel and then we had to be visible and we're going to figure out more what be visible means over these next three weeks so I wish I'd have stayed up there for that that would have helped me out this Sunday <laughs> I don't I don't know but maybe well, that's, uh, that's good. Well, we're, we're well in on our way into the new year. On uh, Sunday the 31st, we're going to have a sort of a vision meeting. Uh, I know a lot of folks have. We, we've done these in the past. We didn't do something like this last year, but uh, with uh, so many questions out there uh, regarding our future and programming and different mm-hmm. things like that, uh, it's a time for us to meet together. Uh, we'll meet at 6 o'clock in the worship center, and we'll have the opportunity to share some things from uh, staff perspective from uh, as as pastor, my perspective, and then also uh, generate some discussion around certain themes uh, as it relates to our future. We had one so. of these previously down in the fellowship hall several years ago right. around round tables, and I remember that we had some whiteboard time where we were putting things on dry race, race board and yeah. everything. And I remember that there was one moment where I think it was Molly brought something up that actually changed some of our outlook for the entire year on right. how we address things. So it was really cool. Yeah, so it, we've done it in a variety of ways. And for whatever reason, I, I think we got stuck in a program glitch last year or something. Right. And uh, so... Uh, Maybe the Cowboys were in the playoffs? No. no that wasn't <laughs> it. <laughs> that wasn't it at all. But if you're a person uh, who wants to be in the know, this is the meeting to be at, right? That is, this is definitely the meeting to be at. And then also we started working last week on the Lenten series, yes. which will begin with Ash Wednesday on February the 17th. I'm excited about Lent this year. Well, I mean, I feel like I say that about everything, but this is really coming together nicely. We do say that about nearly everything. Right. But <laughs> this one is going to be the ne- next level. Maybe right. we could say yeah, that. Next level. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Casey. <laughs> Bring that one Next back. level. So... Uh, it's all fitting together. That's what's so great about it. And I mean, we're intentional with a lot of things, but right. this one is really connecting children, youth, adults, and, and even community. So Intergenerational as yeah. well as community. Uh, it's going to revolve around uh, the message on the 14th, which will be Valentine's Day right. uh, in February. Uh, I mean, it's always on the 14th, right. but uh, and in February too. But I'm glad you but, did that because since I don't celebrate <laughs> that, that helps me remember that I'm missing out. <laughs> So that Sunday uh, precedes Ash Wednesday, mm-hmm. and we will have an Ash Wednesday service at 6 o'clock in the worship center. And uh, it, uh, the message will kind of set things up for some of the things we want to do differently this, uh, this semester. And so uh, this is probably the biggest investment that we've made into the Lenten season. Yeah, definitely. And uh, with uh, some extra activity going on. So uh, definitely uh, have uh, 
uh, your emails opened and ready to hear some of those things and details as we get closer to that. Definitely. I'm, I started talking with Stacy a little bit about it last week after staff meeting, <laughs> and she's on the same wavelength with us most of the time. Um, and so this is going to be good this year. And the, just the potential it has for us to experience uh, to experience God and to experience what he has for our lives, but also what it means to be the kingdom of God. Well, and I th- one of the things we say this probably in a variety of ways, but th- a part of the, I guess, the sense of urgency behind these seasons is once this season is gone, then you move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it moves very fast because you get into uh, start get, winding down the school year and getting into summer. Right. But uh, it's, it's an intentional season, just like Advent, but there's, it's a completely different emotion mm. and, and, and experience, and it's longer. And so right. uh, we, we've talked about that <clears throat> in terms of uh, you know, helping us to, to be engaged in that process mm. and what that means. And so uh, it's, gonna, it's interesting how even the messages we started using back in the fall are finding landing places mm. in certain points of the conversation now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, I think that was true Sunday, and it's going to be true again next Sunday. And, and, and I don't know if this is your experience, but this is what I feel. I feel like when the first time I ever mentioned Advent, or we even mm-hmm. talked about it, there were questions of, wait, do Baptists do Advent? And then the answer was always, well, Christians do Advent. So I just left <laughs> it at that. Um, and then when you introduce the word Lent, most people in their mind, having grown up, all they think about is, well, I gave up chocolate until Easter, and then mm-hmm. I got to hunt Easter eggs. But then do Baptists do Lent? And, well, Christians do Lent. And so I love this idea of seasons because people come into it, myself included, kind of open-minded of this is what it's going to look like, but then what else is there in store for us, and how does it help us in our faith journeys? And so even if you have that in the back of your mind of, well, is this something we do as Baptists? The answer is, well, it's part of our Christian heritage, so let's try it and see where God leads us. And then everybody comes out going, oh, man, that was good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Well, uh, again, uh, I don't want to make the whole uh, podcast about that, but we could very easily. Oh, yeah. And it'd be one of our longer podcasts. (laughs) That is true. I just I think Uh, it's a great time to experience those seasons. Right. And, you know, we we've talked about some of the elements that we're going to introduce this year, but it. I don't know. It just never. Everything seemed to stack up well this year, and okay, uh, and it definitely. I think things that uh, that are going to stay with us and become a part of our identity too. Mm-hmm. No doubt about that. Cool. So, well, Sunday we were able to start the new series that I mm-hmm. wanted to start called One Mission. Uh, I've emphasized over and over that it's day one for the church, mm-hmm. and that it's not just a phrase that you can use, uh, even though it is. But it's one you want to understand and know also that for the church, uh, so often, even though you may want to, to use a phrase like that to help a church re-identify itself, that doesn't come easy. Right. Uh, but through all we've been through over the last year with uh, uh, not being able to meet, with certain meetings not happening anymore, uh, it's really helped us to focus on those things uh, in our in our experience together in this community of faith, uh, where we feel like that we can make uh, stay on mission hmm. uh, and make the and see the greatest fruit from what we do. And so, uh, Sunday we start talking about that in terms of uh, the text where Jesus said He came to seek and to save the lost, and that becomes really a landing point for our thought process, mm-hmm. where everything else ought to revolve around that. Right and. Uh, so uh, this Sunday, we kind of move into uh, another passage that deals with that somewhat, and it will bring back a conversation that I started last uh, fall, I think it might have been early as September, where I, I prompted our folks and asked them to begin to pray their boldest prayers. Mm-hmm. And um, that's been something that, as I think about developing messages and content week in, week out, uh, I don't do that without, it becomes personal to me. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's something that now kind of takes the lead spot in my prayer time, uh, making sure that I'm not just praying for those things that I that I routinely pray for. Right. and just go through a routine without really getting into those things that uh, require the, the activity of God mm. uh, in such a greater way. So 
Uh, we'll bring back some of that as we uh, kind of uh, begin our conversation this Sunday. It's uh, ask whatever you wish and it'll be given to you. Nice. That's a big one. That Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of directions <laughs> you can go with that. Uh, both correct, uh, good positive directions and wrong directions. Yes, and we've can get seen off, that manipulated. Off the path in a quick fast and in a hurry, I yeah, think. We've seen that but, uh, taking the wrong direction many a time over the history of Christianity. Um, but it'll be a, a good opportunity. I think all these, uh, over these next, uh, over the four that we're doing in one mission, uh, they blend well and they overlap well uh, to really help us uh, get a sense of what this one mission is. And then we'll follow it with that meeting on the 31st where we've had the opportunity to think through uh, how this church goes about seeking and saving mm -hmm. uh, and how we begin to pray greater prayers, uh, more significant uh, prayers in terms of the life of our faith community and also uh, in the community that God wants us to reach. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it's all it's all shaping up real well for this new year, and so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, the when you talked about Zacchaeus last week, and you talked about Jesus saying that's his 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 mission is seek and save. I like that you brought in that. Well, someone might say, well, he also healed, he also did miracles, but all those things were pointed to and shaped to be able to seek and save the lost. He taught so that we would understand what it means to seek and save the lost. He 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 did these miracles so people understand better who he was as he was seeking and saving the lost. I mean, it all ties together to that mission. Well, a, a longer version of a Bible study of that would go into some of those times where Jesus did heal someone and then he told them to go and sin no more. Right. And those become really good examples to uh, the fact that, that Jesus was about seeking and saving the lost. He wasn't about healing. That was a part of the ministry to help him seek and save. Mm -hmm. And so the things that we do at church uh, ought to be geared toward that end mm -hmm. in one way or another, even if it includes training leaders, right. uh, discipling others. Uh, the, all of those are a part of the kingdom work of seeing people come to Christ. This Wednesday, our story is Zacchaeus. Is that and right? Invisible. Oh, good deal. Well, uh, I need to get that Bible study. You wrote that Bible study. I don't have it anymore. Um, <laughs> I think I've told you before. I'll get you a copy of that. <laughs> it's one of our older ones. But uh, That's a good one. uh, anyways, things are, are shaping up into to this for this new year. Uh, Teak and I are excited. We want you to be excited with us and not just excited with us, but join us when you can. Uh, you can find us here frequently. Uh, we're <laughs> online uh, a few times a week. And then uh, we have uh, worship in our worship center on Sundays at 1030. So uh, regardless of where you join us, we look forward to seeing you. See you then.